Hello there. Well, it's a beautiful day and I've just got to go and get some compost. So uh, why don't you join me and I'll tell you what this video is about. Well, after the success of our toy windmill project, uh, Carolyn and I have been thinking what we can build the grandchildren next. And inspired by this beautiful sunny day and the bees on the flowers, I think we've got a good idea. Let's show you what we've got in mind. So in this video we're going to be making a self-assembly bumblebee that our grandchildren can assemble and also hopefully learn something from it. So let's get started. We're going to need a set of hole cutters. Now I've got a couple of options. I've got uh, this adjustable unit or I've got these fixed size hole cutters and I think I'm going to use these. And in actual fact I've done a test run. I've cut this circle out of there and it works pretty well. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make some more circles. Okay I've got the piece of wood clamped to the bench. I've got the bit in the hole cutter in the drill and the trick with this is to to start it on one side and then finish it on the other. So here we go. I'm sorry to interrupt this video but it did occur to me that not everybody has got a set of hole cutters and to be honest with you they may not be necessary but what else can we use? Well there's this log for instance perhaps that's too big but you get the gist of what I mean if you've got some branches of different sizes that would do the job failing that just some square timber that would be good different size square timber children love putting things together they don't mind if the bees square or not anyway back to the video now I'm going to flip it finish it off there we go now we've got a nice circle well that was fun all the circles are cut out so you've got 132 mil and 138 245 mils and 154 mil the actual sizes aren't really important as long as they're getting bigger in size uh, this was actually cut out from a door that I fitted recently so that was a handy off cut I'm using I just need to uh, sand off some of the edges now okay well I've taken all the sharp edges off I'm not uh, going for perfection here you know this is a, a bit of a fun toy to, to make uh, I've got two grandchildren so the two toys and um, if you've got more grandchildren than that well you're gonna have a lot more sanding anyway let's go to the next stage now all these circular pieces are going to be held together with a dowel that's going to run through the middle of them which is great except I've got no dowel so I've had a rummage around in my box of bits here and come up with this piece of wood I think it's probably a piece of ash um, and uh, I think I'm gonna have to try and make a piece of dowel from this well there's always a first for some things the diameter of these holes is six mil and this is eight mil thick so I'm gonna cut this piece of wood uh, to eight mil square section and then shave the edges off All I'll say, if you do try this, make sure you've got some gloves on. 60 uh, grit paper, hand drill, piece of wood. Let's try it. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised that didn't take too long, probably about five minutes or so. And um, I've got a reasonably smooth dowel and it's, it's about eight mil in diameter, which just means I need to drill these holes out a little. But otherwise, I think we're on to a winner. To hold all these little pieces onto the dowel and stop them falling off, 
I need a head and a tail. So for the head, I'm going to use this piece of curtain pole and shape it, round it a little bit and just cut it off and there'll be a hole in the back. And for the tail, I'll use this thinner piece of curtain pole. So uh, never throw away your curtain poles. First, I'm going to tackle the head and I'll need to round the end. There we go. Now for the tail piece, I'm going to use this thinner piece of curtain pole and I want to uh, get a, not a sharp point, but a, a, a slightly uh, sharpened end. So uh, I'm going to use a plane. A little bit of sanding and that should do fine. Right folks, well, after having a cup of tea with my chief design consultant, aka Grandma, uh, we've decided that we've got a bit of a problem with this design. And that is that the head is much too small. So that bit's okay. This bit has got to go. So, decided to uh, make the head out of this bit of timber, which is an offcut from a door. There's a lot of offcuts from doors in this workshop. Um, and um, see if I can shape it into a reasonable bee head. Oh well, let's try it. I'm now going to just saw his, the head off the rest of this piece of wood. Now then, to do that, I shall put the body up against it to sort of get the rough proportions. I think that's probably about right. So I'll just mark it there and saw off his head. <laughs> and there we have it. Oh. B's head. So I've marked the centre of the back of the head and I've set the depth guide on the pillar drill so it doesn't go too far. And uh, so let's drill the hole. We've got the body, we've got the dowel that's going to hold the whole thing together. What we need now is the wings. Now the wings are going to go there. And um, we were thinking about what to use for the wings and then we found the milk bottle. So I'm going to cut the wings out of this plastic milk bottle and I think they will be the perfect colour for this bee. I'm really pleased how these are looking now. Really uh, authentic with these milk bottle top wings. All I need to do now is to make all these holes bigger so that this dowel will go through there. I'm using an 8.5mm drill bit as I found that is just the right size for that piece of homemade dowel. Now I need to cut the dowel to length and if you've seen any of my previous videos you'll know that measuring is not my forte so what I'm just going to do is put it up against there a B and mark it out like that. Now the dowel will have to fit into the hole at the back of the head and the front of the tail and in order to do that I'm going to need to just chamfer the end slightly. That's looking pretty good actually. That's looking pretty good. By the time that's knocked in that's going to be good. It's time to try test assembly. I've not put this together before. I've had to make myself a new hammer because I sent the other two to the children. So um, let's see how we're going to do this. Uh, I'm going to start with the head first. So I'm going to bang the spindle into the head. That seems to work. And then we'll put on the first piece. And that should just push down on the middle section and that should push down and I mean the children can knock these on this is the idea plenty of opportunity for bashing with all of these things so that goes on there 
and then we put the tail on the end there. Now that looks a bit too long for me, so you're going to see that. Well, it is a bit too long. So what I'm going to do is just cut that dowel down to size a bit because I really would like all of that butted up together. So that looks like about six or seven mil to come off. Well, I'm really pleased with the way the body has come together. And once a face is painted on the front there, it's going to look really good. But what we need now is some wings. Here are the wings made out of the milk bottle. And I want the children to be able to bolt them on. Now, to bolt them on, I've made some wooden bolts out of just a block of wood with a hole in it and um, these furniture screws which I've just cut off at that point there and I've glued them overnight and this is what they look like. So in order to be able to screw those in they will need a spanner and to make that I'm going to use some 12 mil ply and I'm just going to use this spanner to trace out an outline. I may, I may change the shape once I uh, cut it but to give me a guide I'm just going to trace around this. This is exactly the right size for that wooden bolt. Whoopsie daisy. Here we go. Okay so that's given me a, a template to work to so now I just need to cut that out. To cut out the spanners I'm going to use this scroll saw, uh, one of my favourite little tools bought from Aldi. It's there um, work zone I think it's actually the Shepatch uh, scroll saw it's a brilliant little tool it wasn't that expensive either and it's great for this sort of job where you're trying to cut out something in detail there's the spanner cut out I just need to do a bit of sanding just to smooth off some of the edges I've drilled two test holes in this piece of waste ply, 5mm and 5.5, and I think the 5.5 is much better. I'm drilling a 6mm hole in the wings, slightly bigger. So with the hole drilled, what I'm going to do is just cut a thread using this uh, screw. I'm going to put some wax on the thread and that will lubricate the uh, thread, make it easier for it to go in. There we are. Just tighten that up, unscrew it a bit, waggle it around. Yeah, seems good. Okay, so let's see if it works then. Uh, there's the wings. There's the little bolt. And the children then can tighten it all up with their spanner. Look at that. Oh, that's magic. There you go. Now, of course, you wouldn't have a bolt on the top of a bee. So what I'm going to do is smooth the edges on that. Carolyn's going to paint that as a ladybird. Well, we've got our bee with its wings attached. But now we need some legs, six legs to be precise. And um, I've been looking around for something to use for the legs and I found this bit of plastic uh, cane, which I think must have come with a plant in the past, but I think it's gonna do the job. So uh, I'm gonna cut it up into small sections and drill six holes and then the children can just bang the legs in. I'm just gonna do this at, at various angles. Okay, here we go. There we are. Now I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. We've got uh, wings, we've got six legs. I still need a hole for the cane, but I've got to find a cane to put it on. And we've got a spanner that you can use to tighten up the, uh, the bolt on the top for the wings. If you watched my previous video on the windmill, you'd have seen how I made the hammer. So all we need to do now is to uh, paint it and um, I'm going to hand that over to Carolyn to do that.
So here is our finished bumblebee. And I have to say, we've had great fun making and painting this. Carolyn has done a brilliant face on the front there and she's also painted some little ladybirds on the bolts there. It looks, it looks really great. So just to give you a quick demo on how it goes together, here we go. Tail piece, put the uh, stick in the middle there and then just put the coloured uh, discs on. Here we go. The body goes on, the main body, another coloured disc, and then the head. And then a whole lot can be tapped together with the hammer. Then we've got the wings made out of the milk bottle, which is just screwed on with the ladybird bolts with the supplied spanner for the children to use. There we go. So that's really easy to do. Make sure that that's reasonably tight, but not too tight. For the legs, we've just got these little short sticks, uh, which we just push into the holes and the children can bang them in, do whatever they like. Here we go. Do you know, with these things, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's not perfect. You know, these legs are all odd lengths and stuff, but at the end of the day, the children really do love building these sorts of things. There's the little feelers to go in. I just drilled a couple of holes in the top of the head push those into those there we go push that into there and then finally I've got a ladybird because this is a little bit loose on the back the tail's a bit loose but this ladybird with the, the bolt just goes on the tail and screws down and again they can screw this up with their spanner and that just holds the whole thing together and there we have it now I've got two two bumblebees ready to be shipped off all we've got to do now is make a box to put them in Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next time.